أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد We all receive refuge in Allah from Shaitan, the accursed. We seek refuge in Allah from Iblis. And the reason why we seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan, the accursed, number one, because Allah commands us to do so. Number two, because Allah tells us that Shaitan is an about enemy to mankind. Understand that Shaitan whispers to us every day. Understand that Shaitan's ultimate goal is to take us off the Salat al Mustaqim and enter us into the Jahim, another name for the Jahannam. The ultimate goal of Shaitan is to take you to the hellfire, to take you to the hellfire, you to the hellfire, you to the hellfire, me to the hellfire. His ultimate goal is to take all of us off the Salat al Mustaqim and enter us into the fire. Right? That's what we say. Ahudu billahi min Shaitan al Rajim. We got to understand this reality. We begin by saying, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most merciful. Truly, Allah Subhanahu is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Rahman Rahim. He's merciful to people that don't even deserve to be merciful. He's merciful even to the people that don't even deserve to be, to have mercy given to them. But still, Allah is Rahman Rahim. Allah has made it merciful. Allah has made it incumbent upon Himself. Allah has made it wise to be merciful. Alhamdulillah, He rabbil alameen. Then we say truly and verily, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that created all things. Rabbil alameen, He is the Lord, the fashioner, the sustainer of all things in creation. Alhamdulillah, he rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, that Allah guided us to the path of Islam. Alhamdulillah, he rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, that Allah has blessed us with this opportunity of being in class, right? Gaining some knowledge and an opportunity of being forgiven of all of our sins. Alhamdulillah, he rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, that Allah guided us to the path of Islam and blessed us to be of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last Rasul, the last Prophet. Alhamdulillah, he rabbil alameen. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that two-thirds of the Jannah, two-thirds of the people in paradise, 66% of the people in the paradise is from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah. So guess what? Alhamdulillah, he rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses with the Qur'an. And we talked about last week with the Qur'an, we go from ayah to ayah, right? Learning about certain ayahs, not moving on to the next ayah, right? Until we get a good understanding of that ayah. Today, inshallah, we're going to talk about one of the wisest people in the deen. Today, we're going to talk about one of the wisest, one of the most intelligent people of all time, right? Not because I say so, not because this is my opinion, but because that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, but Alhamdulillah what I mean. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Today we're going to be talking about Luqman the wise. Luqman the Ethiopian, the Sudanese, the Nubian. Alhamdulillah what I mean. Chapter 31 in the Quran is called Luqman. Chapter 31 in the Quran is called Luqman. We read through this story all the time. Luqman, the wise. But who was Luqman? Do we know who Luqman was? Do we know what Luqman looked like? Do we know? If you understood who Luqman was, right, it might give you some inspiration for your situation. First and foremost, we have a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is for those, right, who it affects. This is for those who might give some inspiration to, because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to give inspiration to some of his 
the harvest. If they were feeling down, right, they might have some type of jahalia in them. He would give them some type of inspiration, some type of advice to encourage them, right? So one time one of the Sahabas, he was feeling ashamed. He was feeling bad because he was what? Black. He was dark skinned. He was black. What did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell his family? He said, don't be ashamed of being black. This is from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So surely I should quote this hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Narrated in the Tafsir in the Qadir. Sahih. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told this man who was feeling bad about being black, being feeling ashamed about being black. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't be ashamed of being black because there are four of the best men ever that were black. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't be ashamed of being black. Don't be ashamed of being black. Because four of the best people ever were black. One of the men that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described was Luqman. Luqman. So you mean to tell me that there's a whole chapter in the Quran called Luqman, and this person that was called Luqman, that he was black. This is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Four of the best of black people, four of the best people ever were black people. Luqman, Balaam, and Jah, and there was one more that I forgot. But the emphasis today is Luqman. When Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said one of the best of people who was a black person was Luqman. We're told in the top series in Kathir by Ibn Abbas and other Sahabas that Luqman was an Ethiopian. In another narration, it said that he was from the people of Nubia. He was Nubian. And if you go into the geographical dynamics, it said that he was in a part of Egypt, right? Or even Sudanese, right? That whole region of Ethiopia, Sudan, Eritrea, all of that was like one part, right? Habasha. So we can say that Luqman was a Habashi, like Balaam. Right? That's why I said four of the best of black people were Luqman, Balaam, Mekjah. Right? They were black people. How was she? Right? African. So Luqman, right? One who Allah subhanahu chose a whole chapter in the Quran. Allah singled out this person, this African person, this Nubian person, this Ethiopian Sudanese person and chose a whole chapter, named the whole chapter after Luqman, this African person. Man, I hope that I mean. Did you know that Luqman was African? Did you know that Luqman was black? But if you didn't know, now you know. This is a fact. This is a historical, this is an Islamic fact. So therefore, all we're doing is what? Sharing knowledge. This is not a knowledge that should be hidden. This is not a knowledge that you shouldn't be talking about, especially if you're trying to heal a people. Right? What's the law for the same Quran? Verily, all of mankind, all mankind, verily there has come to you an admonishment, a lesson from your Lord, right? And a shifa for all of the diseases that are in your heart. So the Quran is a shifa, the Quran is a healing. If you have a psychological problem, you have an emotional problem, you have a spiritual problem, you have an inferiority complex problem? Then the Quran is the cure for that. Having proper knowledge is the cure for that. By having an inferiority complex, pay attention. We're talking about you. We're talking about people that look just like you. Right? This is knowledge to help you and aid you and encourage you and to motivate you. Understand? There are people that look just like you. That the Prophet Muhammad so also said, for the best of the best of people of all mankind. You got to know this knowledge. You got to know this knowledge. You better know this knowledge. Why do you know this knowledge? Because the Prophet Muhammad so gave us this knowledge. Anything that the Prophet Muhammad so also gave us, it is beneficial. So for somebody to say that, you don't need to learn that. Oh, that's not important. 
So you mean to tell that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa making this point to talk about this? We have the hadith with the scriptures from the Sahabas who told us about this, but you say that it's not important. But you say that it's something that we should not study. Stop it. You're not better than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and you're definitely not better than the Sahabas. So stop it. To the contrary, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, the best and the foremost that are deen are the Muhajirin and the Ansar and those who follow them. So therefore, if the Ba'a said, Luqman was an Ethiopian, Sudanese, Nubian, right? We're told that he was black. It said that he had a flat nose. His nose was flat, right? Like some of us blacks, we got the noses that's flat, flat nose, and that he was short in stature, so he was short. He was short, he was black, he had a pup nose, he had a little flat nose, like the Africans do, right? This is what Ibn Abbas, as well as some of the other Sahaba said with regards to look mild. Again, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, do not be ashamed of being black, for four of the greatest people were black. Look mild, which we're talking about today, Balal, we'll talk about that another day, right? And Jah, we'll talk about that another day. There was one more that I forgot. But there were many other people that were black, that were the best of the best in this deen. There were many other people that were black in color, whether they were African or they were Semitic, right? Either they were Hebrew, Arab, or Hamitic, right? Because we're told by Ibn Abbas, right? Like just like Ibn Abbas has told us about Muhammad, that Muhammad was Ethiopian and Sudanese, Ibn Abbas told us that the Hamites and the Semitics, right? The Semitics and the Hamites and the Semites, that they looked in the light. They were both black. We have evidence from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have evidence from the Hadith. We have evidence from the Sahabas. So there were many people that were great in stature. There were many people that had great positions. There were many people that were honored that were black. Again, just coincide with the Hadith when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not be ashamed of being black. Because there were many great people that were black. So let's name a couple other black people that were, that were famous or that were great. Musa salam was black. Moses was black. Let's understand it. Don't be ashamed of being black. Right? Moses was black. Although Moses was not a Hamite, right? He was a Shemite, but he was still black. The Bani Israel, they were black. Right? How do we know? If the Ba'as told us so, and we have a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa'ama Musa ashaba Adam, right, with regards to Musa alayhi salam, he was dark black, right, like a black pro, looking like the people of Zut, right, the people of Sudan, right, looking like the Africans, or the people of Shadu Al, looking like the people of Yemen, right, the people of Yemen, they were black people as well, right, so Musa alayhi salam was black, Asiya was black, uh-oh, Asiya. Asiya was black, right? The queen, the wife of Aaron, she was black as well. And she was what? A Shahida. She was mortared in the cause of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he named Asiya in the same sentence as Mayam. He said the best women, the best women ever, Asiya. He named her in one direction, Asia before Mariam. Asia and Mariam. Right? Asia was the wife of their own. She was the wife of their own that even though their own was a disbeliever, even though their own was arrogant, she still believed. Right? That's why it was so profound. He was the worst of the worst. The most despicable, the most arrogant, killing people, raping people, being a racist. Remember we talked about that when we talked about Musa and Islam, black on black crime, right? The Africans against the Israelites, the Africans and the Hebrews, although they looked in the light, it was black on black crime, right? Africans and Israelites, right? We talked about that. So even though Pharaoh or Pharaoh was the worst of the worst, his wife became a believer. 
She was a believer, right? And she was killed because of her belief. She was black. She was an African woman, dark black, right? Alhamdulillah, me. And being that, I didn't put this name on here, but being that we're in the locality of Egypt, who else was from Egypt? What other woman that was from Egypt that was very high status in his deen, has a very high position, right? Did beautiful things, Allah blessed her. Who can tell me from Egypt? Let's go. No, yes, yeah, Sarah, Sarah, yes, yeah, Sarah. No, but Sarah wasn't from Egypt. Hajar, there we go. Hajar. Hajar, right? The mother of Ismail, alayhi salam. She was Egyptian, right? She has a very well status, a very high status in, in Islam. She was the founder of Mecca. She was the first inhabitant of Mecca. She was the one, right, because of the Zamzam water, right, came because of Hajar, this African woman, right, her and her son, Ismail and Islam, right, the rights of Hajj, going back and forth between these two mountains is because of what? Hajar, because of this African woman, Zamzam, stopped, we want the water to stop. She was the one that built the foundations or the batteries, right, over the water, otherwise it would have been all over the earth. Hajar. What did the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to the too? Hajar. He said, Ashaba, Adam, or Adam, Shadida, Jahada. Hajar was dark black and with what? Jahada. With kinky hair. Hajar was jet black with kinky hair. The same description that Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described, Hajar is the same description as Musa alayhi salam. Ashaba Adam, Adam Shadid, Jahada, dark black with kinky hair. Even though he's an Israelite, dark black with kinky hair. Hajar, an African, dark black with kinky hair. So here we're talking about those that were great people that were black. Because the Prophet Muhammad said again, going back to the Hadith. So what I'm talking about is based on the Hadith. Not just talking about the son of my neck. Right? I'm not being racist. Right? I'm not doing reverse racism or none of that. I'm quoting Hadith. Alhamdulillah, what I mean. Who has a problem with Hadith? You should not have a problem with any type of Hadith. Anything from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you should not have a problem with that. So here now, we'll talk now. So again, based on this Hadith, what Rasulullah Sallallahu said, do not be ashamed of being black. Because there were four that were great, that were black. We're talking about great black people that were black. Alhamdulillah, Rasulullah also told us this. He gave us the example. He gave us the rule of thumb. So I'm not doing anything dumb. Using the rule of thumb. Right? So Musa was black. Asia was black. The people of Bad Israel, they were black. The 12 tribes of Jacob, right? Judah, all of them, right? And they married African women. We talked about that. Even Abbas said, right? The Shemites, Bad Israel, the Israelites, they were dark black with a little brown, brown undertone. Dawud al Islam, black. Suleiman al Islam, black. Isa al Islam, Jesus, black. Right? And we have the Sahaba that swore with Allah. Wallahi! We have the Sahaba that were in Omar al An by Salam. In the water, in my mind, in the Sahih of Bukhari, he said, Wallahi, I swear by Allah that Rasulullah did not say that Isa Islam was Ahmad. He wasn't red, he wasn't white. Wallahi, but he said that he was black, the most handsome of blacks. Isa Islam, so again, going into those great people that were black, Isa Islam, Jesus. Ibn Abbas was black. Ibn Mas'ud was black. Ali ibn Ali was black. We're told that Ali ibn Ali, his description was the same description of Bilal. Adam Shalid. Adam Shalid. Right? Omar ibn Ali, he was black. Abu Dhar was black. Then we learned just the other day, I learned the other day, because I'm still learning in his deen. But go to Salda, who was the second wife, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sauda, she was a Qurayshi, 
that she was black as well. So how could she be a Qureshi? She wasn't an African, but she's described as being black because the original Arabs were black. Remember we have the Hadith where it said that all the ten uncles of the Prophet Muhammad, some of us, some of Abbas, right, Hamza, right, Abu Lahab, all the, all the ten uncles of the Prophet Muhammad, some of us, some of that they were black in color, like black camels. They were all dark black, and they were all what? Quraysh. So to say that this woman, Salda, who was a Quraysh, although she wasn't African, but she was what? Semitic, that she was black, it all goes, in, it all coincides with what Ibn Abbas said. Ibn Abbas said, what? Those that are Semitic, those who are what? The Hebrews and the Arabs, black. Right? So Salda, right? She was uh, one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad, something or something. She was born she, she was black. And we have another wife of the Prophet Muhammad, something or something, Maria. Right? Maria or Maria. She was the mother of Ibrahim. Remember the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a son, Ibrahim, but he died at a young age. Right? Maya was one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was an African as well. How can they tell if a woman was a wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or not? They said if the woman wore the niqab, if she covered her face, then she was one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let that stick in. If a woman wore the niqab, she covered her face, then she was the wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If she didn't cover her face, then she was considered one of the right hand possessions. Understand that. Okay? So again, we're talking about those going back to the Hadith. Because we're on the subject matter of Luqman, the Ethiopian, the Sudanese, the Nubian, 